Most people know Susan B. Anthony as a social reformer and a women's rights activist who played a pivotal role in the women's suffrage movement. However, few know more details than that. Susan B. Anthony was born on February 15, 1820 in Adams, Massachusetts. She was raised by a Quaker family with long activist traditions. Her father, Daniel, owned a cotton factory. Daniel made an extreme effort to not buy cotton from slave owners in the South. He believed that if he boycotted the cotton from the South, the South would not get as much money and their economy would suffer. It was hard for him to find enough workers to work his cotton factory. Daniel believed strongly in his values and wasn't willing to sacrifice them in order to make money. Susan took after her dad in the way that she believed strongly in her values. She attended the first women's rights convention held in Seneca Falls in Rochester, New York in 1848. However, she did not take up the cause until later. Before she was involved in the women's rights movement, she devoted her time to the temperance movement. However, she was prevented from speaking at a temperance conference because she was a woman. She realized that women had to win the right to speak in public and to vote. In 1851, she met Elizabeth Cady Stanton, who became her co-worker in social reform activities. From the first time she attended a women's rights convention in 1852 until the end of the Civil War, she campaigned door to door and in legislators for the two causes of women's rights and the abolition of slavery. By 1856, Anthony had become an agent for the American Anti-Slavery Society. In 1866, Stanton and Anthony initiated the American Equal Rights Association, and in 1868, they began publishing a women's rights newspaper called The Revolution. The newspaper proudly displayed their motto, men, their rights, and nothing more, women, their rights, and nothing less. In 1869, they founded the National Women's Suffrage Association, and later on, it merged with the American Women's Suffrage Association, to form the National American Women's Suffrage Association, with Susan B. Anthony as its main leader. In 1872, Susan B. Anthony and 15 supporters from Rochester became the first women ever to vote in a presidential election. She was arrested and was convicted in a widely publicized trial. The judge instructed the jury to find her guilty without any deliberations and told her to pay a $100 fine. Anthony refused to pay the fine. However, the judge did not sentence her to prison time. Susan B. Anthony spent the rest of her life working for the federal suffrage amendment. She noticed that the most historical literature didn't mention any women. This led to her and her supporters to sit down and begin writing the history of women's suffrage in five volumes. Ida Harper worked with her on, her, on writing her biography which was titled The Life and Work of Susan B. Anthony. Most of the material in her biography was pulled from scrapbooks she had kept throughout her life and can now be found in the Library of Congress and from her diaries and letters. Anthony attended her last suffrage convention just one month before her death. She ended her final speech with the words, failure is impossible. 14 years after her death, the 19th Amendment, which gave the women the right to vote, was added to the Constitution. In recognition of her dedication, the U.S. Treasury Department put her portrait on dollar coins, making her the first woman to be honored on U.S. coinage.